Hey everyone, either welcome back or welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I want to talk about what I wish would change for people who have migraines. So before I get into any more details, time for the intro. With it being Migraine Awareness Month, there are a few things that I wish could change for people who are like me and live with migraines. It's some societal, some to do with family, and some to do with just how hard it can be maneuvering around all of the things that can go on when you have migraines. I don't think people realize just how hard it is to live with migraines, especially when you're on a preventative and that preventative is not being as effective as what you would like it to be. So I've said this many times, but I am at about 75 to 80% of what I consider my normal was before I had IIH or migraines. So what I mean by this is that that's 70 to 80% of what used to be normal. And not only is that the case, but I wear down much faster than I used to. And so with this understanding, it would be really nice if people would just have an idea of the accommodations that are needed to be made for people with migraines. And to be honest with you, I'd love to do a video on this, but it would be so individual that I don't know how helpful it would be. I guess let me know down in the comments if you would like me to do a video on what kind of accommodations would benefit people with migraines and I can do that from my own perspective. I wish people would ask more questions when it comes to what it's like living with migraines because there are a lot of assumptions that are made in this case and if the assumptions weren't there it would be much better because there would be better communication. People wouldn't assume that just because you're looking okay that you're feeling okay. People wouldn't assume that, oh, well, you have head pain. Why don't you just take medication for it like I do? And why are you dealing with that pain if it's bothering you so much? Avoiding the things that cause migraines is often a full-time job because often it involves things like foods. It can involve things like stress. It can involve things like your period or the weather. Now, some of those I listed are out of our control, but many of those are also in our control. When you are able to control the things that you can, it gives you the ability to prepare for the things that you can't control. And I've actually talked about that before, about why it's so important that you manage the triggers that you can so that you can better prepare for the ones that you can't. And to be honest with you, I feel like I kind of left that a bit short because although you can do your best to prepare for the things that you can't control, it's still really difficult when things boil over or your bucket spills over and you get a migraine because that migraine isn't lasting for a few hours on average, it's lasting for several days. And the actual migraine pain itself is maybe only a few hours, but that first and last phase that are in the migraine phases tend to last actually quite a decent amount of time sometimes. And in fact, if you are really not taking care of yourself, you can actually end one migraine and then start another. There are so many things that can contribute to migraines and you gotta keep track of pretty much all of them in order to avoid them without much help from a preventative. And even when you're on a preventative, it's not gonna be 100%. If you're able to dispose of hundreds of dollars a month, the chances that you need to be working are probably quite small. And so, the people who need access to these medications and would likely benefit from them the most because they would be missing less work because of them 
are not able to access these medications because of cost. Now, thankfully in Canada, a lot of the times when you do get employment, you do get insurance that is able to cover medications and all of that that aren't under government health care. And so unless you have good health insurance through your employment or you pay for a personal plan, you're not going to be able to access these medications. And I consider it ironic in a way because many people with migraines, if they had the ability to function, would be able and be willing to work and want to work. And so if they had access to something that would help their migraines get better, they'd be able to access the medications. And then because those medications are covered, they'd be having fewer migraine days and missing fewer days of work. It would be a benefit to not only businesses, but it'd be a benefit to the government as well because you're making more money and therefore more income tax. And along with people making more money, people are more likely to be spending money out in the world. So that means that places that have sales tax, which in Canada there is a national or government goods and services tax is what it's called, but it's on a lot of things that you purchase around the country. And there's also, depending on what province you're in, a provincial sales tax. Not as much as usually included in that, but there's still taxes that are added to your bill every time you purchase something. So some people are not able to purchase some things because the taxes actually take them above the level that they can afford for that particular time. So if you were making more money, you'd actually be making more in sales taxes because people would be making larger purchases. And they were making purchases that they probably wouldn't normally make because when it comes to balancing budgets and all of that, you tend to focus on the things that are absolutely required first and then it kind of goes into luxury items after that. The governments won't pay for this because it's they consider it too expensive. But if they were to cover it, let's say in the ideal world they were to cover it, more people would ac have access to a medication that likely would benefit them. This would actually bring more people into the workforce because they have access to that money and they have access to the ability to work. The thing is, is not only do you have those people now working, so they're not likely to be on any type of assistance from the government, so you're spending extra money there, but they're also bringing in income through income taxes and whatever else they're spending it on. If you're enjoying my content, please feel free to subscribe. Remember that it's completely free. It just allows us to reach more people with IIH and migraines. When you're subscribing, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming future content. If you enjoyed this particular video, be sure to give it a like. If you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to like and follow. And as for now, that's it for today. Bye everyone.